welcome to Barnstorming with Jason Ringenberg, the August 2023 edition. Before I get started, a big thank you shout out to my friend Jim Cessna for giving me this fantastic <laughs> DeKalb seed corn hat. I've always loved DeKalb seed corn hats, but this hat is really extra special because it was Jim's father, John Cessna's hat. The Cessnas were neighbors of our neighbors of ours in West Bureau County. They were from Mineral, Illinois, which is four miles away from Sheffield. They were just down the road, in fact, just down Cold Creek. You could paddle down Cold Creek, get to their farm from our farm. Now, John wore this hat. I remember him wearing it quite a lot. He loved this hat. John Cessna was a magnificent human being. One of the most big-hearted and positive people I've ever met on my travels through this planet Earth. I've met on this planet Earth. He was just an amazing fellow who, who had such a positive impact on so many people. So thank you, Jim, for this fantastic head of, of your dad, John's. And I will, I will wear it uh, with great honor. Speaking of folks that made a huge impact, this, this episode of Barnstorm with Jason Ringenberg is gonna be about Robbie Robertson and the band. Robbie Robertson recently passed away and has left a tremendous legacy of fantastic music behind him. Now, like most folks in the 70s, I got into Robbie Robertson and the band through Dylan, through their connection with Bob Dylan. I was a major, major Dylan head, and so I, of course, got into, into the band as well. Now, in those days, you know, there, there wasn't, of course, the internet, there wasn't VHS or DVD things for sale that you could watch of your, of your favorite recording artists. A lot of times you get totally into these, to these artists that you'd listen to on LPs or 8-track or tapes, and you wouldn't even really know what they looked like or how they performed live. Especially if you were in an isolated place like Bureau County that didn't have, you know, people coming through to shows, to do shows. So when the last waltz came out on, on movie, me and my brother Jerry decided to go to make a journey to Peoria, Illinois, which is about an hour away, to see the last waltz. It was played in one of the theaters. Jerry was somehow into so much cool music that very few people in Bureau County had even heard of. You know, Jerry was seriously into a lot of the glam stuff, Mott the Hoople, he was into a lot of, 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 of new wave stuff like Roxy Music and the Ramones and the Sex Pistols before anyone else had even heard of folks like that in Bureau County. Heavy into Bowie, into the Faces, all kinds of stuff like that. And he was into the band as well. So we decided to go down. Uh, on this trip we took Two other sort of like-minded spirits with us. There wasn't a lot of folks in Bureau County, as I said, that knew about this kind of music, that knew about Van Morrison and the band and Neil Young and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we took uh, Joe Carper, who was actually a fantastic drummer. He later became the drummer for the legendary Western Bureau County band Wind Jam. Um, and I've actually played with Joe a few times over the years. Fantastic drummer. And a real, you know, just a real thoughtful guy, really into poetry and great music, things like that. We also took Kevin Kopp, who was a very eccentric guy, really interesting person. So we went there, you know, on this hour drive, which was a long time, a long drive in those days, to Peoria, Illinois, the only big city, you know, near us, which in retrospect, Peoria wasn't all that big to start with. But we were going there. We were on like the secret mission to go check out the last walls in the band and all these crazy artists that we heard were on this, in this movie. So we were... We were on our own little quest here. You know, it was just us four, us four. We got to the movie theater, and surprisingly, it was empty. <laughs> I think there was only like six people in the whole theater, and we were four of them. So there we were. You know, the credits rolled, you know, the title page rolled out, and the first thing it said was, listen to this mo movie loud. And that, you know, that got, us, got our attention. We were simply, all four of us were simply transfixed by that film. It was absolutely amazing to see all those artists in their prime, at their peak, delivering the performances of their lifetimes on that, on that, uh, on that concert movie. 
absolutely fantastic. Every single artist just was so wonderful. And we were just absolutely enamored with the whole thing. We left the film all the way home. We talked about Bob Dylan and the band and all these artists and what they sang and how they looked and how they delivered. And looking back, it was my first exposure to a lot of those folks live, as I said. Especially Robbie Robertson stood out because he was so incredibly charismatic. Uh, you know, fantastic player. I, we knew that before we went there, but I never really realized how dynamic of a performer he was. He was just all over. The camera just loved looking at Robbie Robertson. It was absolutely fantastic. So, anyway, as the years went by, I kept listening to the band, of course. They became one of the go-to recording artists. I always loved the band, always. Robbie Robertson, all that stuff. As I started my own bands, you know, I sang the weight a lot in different bands and incarnations over the years. Also did Up on Cripple Creek quite a lot. Shakespeare's Riot covered that song. We did a pretty good version of it. Tom Miller and uh, Gary Gabula's rhythm section really could, they really got that song. They, they really got it and could really get that, especially Tom and those sort of weird Levon Helm off beats that, that Levon, that sort of southern funky drawl thing he had on the drums. <laughs> you know, Tom got that. He, he, he perfectly captured that. So, you know, Shakespeare's Riot did it. Uh, when I moved to Nashville, I was singing it in sound checks and stuff, and a few times the guys kind of kind of joined in, but Warner and Jeff really weren't into the band much. They kind of thought they were a bunch of hippies. <laughs> so I could never get the guys to, to cover up on Cripple Creek or any of the band. Interestingly, uh, when it came, uh, came time to record Lost and Found, Robbie Robertson's name came up quite a lot as someone to produce the Lost and Found record. EMI was really into it. The A&R person, Steve Urbowski, was heavy into the idea. Jack Emerson, Andy McLennan were, were, were into the idea. In fact, they may have actually originated the idea. And I, of course, was all over it. But Warner and Jeff just weren't into it. Once again, they just kind of thought the band was were, were hippies, which I guess they kind of were. <laughs> but um, so anyway, Robbie didn't produce that record. But you know, it would have been an interesting thing had had Robbie Robertson produced Lost and Found. It's interesting when me and Jerry learned this song. We had to write down the lyrics, listening to the, our eight track version of of the song. We didn't have the album on LP, we had it on 8-track, and of course there wasn't internet in those days to look it up. <laughs> so we'd have to listen to the 8-track and write them down really fast, because with 8-tracks tapes in those days, you could stop it, but it would just go back to the beginning of the song. It wouldn't. There wasn't a proper pause function on those old 8-track tapes, at least on the machine that we had. So we had to like write them really fast. We got most of those lyrics right, but there were a few ones we didn't get right, which I'd like to share with you. The last verse, uh, verse of the song has the first two lines of the fifth verse. The proper version of it, the official version, is there's a flood out in California, and up north it's freezing cold, and this living off of the road is getting pretty old. Now, we heard that as I'm pulling out of California, and up north it's freezing cold. This living off of the road is getting pretty old. That's how we heard it. I'm pulling out of California, not there's a flood out in California. So we interpreted that as Robbie had sort of fast-forwarded to, he's out touring with a band and was writing about, you know, being on the road with the band and, you know, leaving California on, after having done some shows. So that's how, that's how we interpreted it. The fourth verse of it, the last two lines of that are, Now that just gave my heart a throb to the bottom of my feet, and I swore as I took another pull, my Bessie can't be beat. I swore as I took another pull. That is a southern euphemism for taking a hard liquor drink straight out of the bottle. I took another pull. We heard that for some reason as, now that just gave my, gave my heart a throb to the bottom of my feet, and I swore as I took another toke, my Bessie can't be beat. As I, I swore as I took another toke, my Bessie can't be beat. 
So me and Jerry, I guess, thought, you know, Robbie was making some sort of marijuana reference there. <laughs> um, and then the third verse, we got really wrong. Um, the, the, the last lines of that verse are, There's one thing in the whole wide world that I sure would like to see. That's when that little love of mine dips her donut in my tea. Okay. That in itself is a, a pretty salacious line, especially for its time. We interpreted that even more sexually and suggestive, but I'm honestly not going to repeat what we interpreted that as. <laughs> and luckily, there's no internet version of Shakespeare's Riot doing that song on the on the internet. <laughs> so you'll have to just imagine what we thought. All right, up on Cripple Creek, my friends. Here we go. When I get off of this mountain, I know where I'm gonna go. Straight down the Mississippi River to the Gulf of Mexico. The Lake Charles, Louisiana, little Bessie girl that I once knew. She told me just to come on by if there was anything she could do. Up on Cripple Creek, she sends me if I spring a leak. She mans me, I don't have to speak. She defends me a drunkard's dream if I ever did see one. Good luck had you stung me through the racetrack I did go. I bet on one horse to win and she bet on another to show. The odds were in my favor. I had them five to one. And that dang to win came around the track. Sure enough, we had one. Up on Cripple Creek, she sends me if I spring a leak. She mans me, I don't have to speak. She defends me a drunkard's dream if I ever did see one. I took up all of my winnings and I gave my little Bessie half. The next line of this is my favorite line of all the lines Robbie wrote, I think. And she tore it up and threw it in my face just for a laugh. Now there's one thing in this whole wide world I sure do love to see. That's when that little love of mine puts a donut in my tea. Up on Cripple Creek, she sends me if I spring a leak. She mans me, I don't have to speak. She defends me a drunkard's dream if I ever did see one. Now me and my mate, we were back at the shack. We had Spike Jones on the box. She said, I can't take the way you sing, but I love to hear him talk. Now that just gave my heart a throb to the bottom of my feet. And I swore as I took another toke, now baby can't be beat. How sweet! Up on Cripple Creek, she sends me if I spring a leak. She mans me, I don't have to speak. She defends me a drunkard's dream if I ever did see one. yo la la hoo hoo you're a little lord of that hoo-hoo You're a lord of that hoo-hoo You're a little lord of that hoo-hoo There's a flood out in California No, I just have to do it how I first heard it, folks. Well, I'm pulling out of California And up north it's freezing cold And this living in out of the road is getting pretty old I guess I'll call up my big mama I'll tell her I'll be rolling in But you know deep down I'm kind of tempted To go and see my Bessie again Up on Cripple Creek She sends me if I spring a leak She mans me, I don't have to speak She defends me a drunkard's dream If I ever did see one Up on Cripple Creek she sends me if I spring a leak. She bends me, I don't have to speak. She defends me a drunkard's dream if I ever did see one. You're a lot of You're a little lot of lay. You're a lot of lot of You're a little lot of lay. Yo. 
Someday. All the best to you.